So let's go to streams and then let's say, let's do another book. Uh, this, this writing have a future one is pretty good. Uh, okay, so let's copy this. Let's hit alt this, let's hit app ideas. And then we're basically just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna write app ideas for the following 3.5 turbo. We might even knock it up to four, but the problem with four is that it takes a while. <laughs> But, uh, so I usually leave it on 3.5 because most of the time for this thing, uh, it, you don't really need four to do it. I don't think, I think four is kind of overkill. Um, so yeah, right. App ideas with actually, but it would be kind of cool just to see four on stream. So, and the nice thing about chat GPT MD is that you can actually switch these in between your different messages and stuff like that. So let's say you just wanted to switch to GPT four, you just do what I did. You just change 3.5 turbo to four. And then all of a sudden, if you have GPT four access, it works, right? So write app ideas for the following. Let's read this quote. The difficulty of achieving standardizing consciousness can be illuminated through an example. The medieval dispute over universals concern the problem of comparison. What do I do when I compare a table and a chair? Do these two objects have something in common? Something to be revealed as typical? Perhaps their shared furnitureness? That was the view of the realists. Or must I accept that the characteristics of these two things are not comparable and that I have to pluck a word out of thin air, such as the word furniture, to induce a comparison where no one, real, no real one is possible. That was the view of the nominalists. For the former, the typical, the universal, is actually embedded in particulars and can be discovered. Universalia centralia. Hence, the designation realists. For the latter, there is nothing behind the particulars, and the typical is nothing but a name we invent to facilitate comparisons. Universalia sunt nomina. Hence, the designation nominalist. Basically, this book, Does Writing Have a Future, um, is written back in like the, the 80s, I think, or something, by this author named Willem Flusser. And the idea that he comes at is basically kind of like, what is the purpose of writing? What has it meant to the human species? Why have we kept a text around for so long? What is the perfect uh, purpose of alphabets and poems and you know, uh, words becoming more computational over time and as the people start writing programs and things like that too? So it's really interesting to just kind of like... Uh, he every word is just a banger in this like he he has so many quotes i've like literally highlighted a page and then highlighted the entire very next page because it's just another banger right um okay so let's go back here and let's see what gpt comes up with we're using gpt4 so it's going to come in slower but let's see if we think that the ideas are better. Furnitureness. I already like it. This was really fun about this concept too, or what I like about it is that I actually don't have to do that much typing. <laughs> it's kind of like a game because you never know what GPT is going to come up with. And we get to kind of like come up with prompts in real time together. Universal Comparator app. This app allows users to input two objects or concepts and provides a list of possible shared characteristics as well as a percentage score indicating their similarity. So this is pretty similar to the thing that we just created, right? Users can choose between realist mode, which assumes that universals are real, and nominalist mode, which assumes that universals are just names. The app could use machine learning algorithms to analyze data from various sources and generate meaningful comparisons. So again, a comparator app, that actually sounds pretty interesting. A medieval philosophy quiz game. Create an interactive game where players answer questions related to medieval philosophy, including topics such as realism, nominalism, and other philosophical disputes over universals. Players can earn points for correct answers and compete on a global leaderboard. Realism versus nominalism debate simulator, an app that simulates debates between realists and nominalists by generating arguments based on historical text from both sides of the dispute. Users can like which side they want to represent in the debate, read through the generated arguments, and respond using counter arguments using pre written statements or by typing their own responses. Um, so that one's kind of interesting. Uh, Furnitureness detector, a fun AR based app where they point at different objects like tables or chair, and it will determine if it has furnitureness. Um, I think this one's, this one's my favorite so far. Um, and then Universality Explorer, an educational tool designed for students studying philosophy or anyone interested in exploring abstract concepts like universality more deeply. The user inputs an object 
into a visual mind mapping application, then it generates connections between related ideas while highlighting potential universal traits shared among them according to either realist or nominal perspectives. So this one sticks out to me and this one sticks out to me. Um, and I can't really decide. I think let's go with the AR one because um, it just looks fun. And then also, you know, it's different than this one's still kind of uh, mind mapping reference as like graph and it would probably be like a D3 stack. Okay, so yeah, what would be a good stack for, for on iOS? Because like we're doing an AR app, which generally these days is done through phones. So we got Swift, we got AirKit. I'm going to let it finish though. It's interesting. A lot of these things you don't really think about when you're setting up an app, right? Like I feel like sometimes you'll have an idea and then you'll be like, okay, what do I need? I need like a database. I need like a front end, yada, yada, yada. And it becomes like this whole thing. But then you totally forget to do analytics and crash uh, testing and logging and, you know, like, oh, how am I actually going to store this? And then like, you know, this is, I think, why a lot of programmers, and I actually read a blog post about this earlier today where um, the author was claiming that uh, GPT was allowing them to take on more ambitious work. And I agree. I think that the the work that you can take on with GPT is much more ambitious just because you can you have it write all this stuff out for you that you don't have to think about. So usually I'll just go through these. And like I said, I'll kind of like get rid of the ones that I don't have questions about. So let's get rid of GitHub and let's get rid of, uh, let's change this to six. And then let's get rid of... Um, Yeah, we don't we don't really need Swift too. I mean, we know that we have to write it in Swift, but basically, I'm 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 cooking the books, as it were, in in changing the thing that it would that the assistant said, so that when I send the next message, it'll only have the things that I want to talk about. So AR Kit, CoreML, UI Kit, uh, Xcode. That's another one that is probably a thing that I would figure out. Uh, okay, so then let's actually just grab the thing that we did before, where we said. Um, so it's still doing stack stuff. Can you stub out in one line JS docs? So let's do the same thing here. Can you stub out? Let's just go down the list and just see what it comes up with. And then we'll call it a day here. So we have five things to get through AR kit. So can you stub out, um, one method names and one line Swift docs? We'll leave it in Swift because I know that it likes, it's like Swift. <laughs> It looks like it's already doing the core ML stuff too. I don't know what this mark stuff means. GPT-4 is moving pretty quick, I'm not going to lie, but actually because we started out with 4, I think it's in a good place that we can switch back to 3.5 turbo and get faster results. Um, so what did it say? So we have, I don't really write Swift all that much, so this is actually going to be pretty new to me too. So we're importing ARKit, CoreML, uh, we have a view controller here that's extending UI view controller and this AR scene view delegate. Uh, we're asserting that this scene view exists and that the furniture detection model exists of the ML model. And then we're saying when it loads, set it up, uh, load the furniture detection model and configure the AR session. So the setup uh, loads, this is the, the setup of the scene view, uh, loads the furniture detection from CoreML uh, and then configures an AR session. And then we detect objects in real time using this detect and classify objects. So uh, let's say that uh, that we want to stub out now the uh, core ML and then we'll do the Swift UI and we can see that all our numbers got messed up but it doesn't even seem to care like <laughs> who even noticed <laughs> um, so let's say stub out to um, the ML 
logic for um let's say like crud a new item for furniture furniture miss oopsie okay so now it's doing the core ml So we do our initialization, we check our ML model file, which has labeled training data. So this looks like it's like uh, pre-trained models or, or uh, supervised learning is the word I was looking for. And this is great, again, like you don't need to necessarily know all this stuff and you can kind of, it's a great starting point. Right. And I think that that's like a lot of the ways that I like to think of it is that it's a starting point when you have nothing, when you're in the middle of it and you run into an error, it helps you get unstuck with that error. And then it helps you deploy at the end too, because you can go back and read over it and say, do I have everything here? All right. Um, so it helps at every step of the way. So let's see what it came up with. Here's a stub uh, for the ML logic to create a new item for furnitureness. So then we have our furniture detection model. We have the model itself. We initialize using a pre-trained uh, learning model. We train a new machine learning model that uses labeled data and saves it as an ML model file in the apps document directories, which has the training data path, the validation data path, the epochs to iterate over all the samples and the batch size. And I've never used MLKit. So this is all new to me. <laughs> uh, it's a create new model with a training data path, validation data path, epochs. These are all set to defaults, which looks cool. Um, read an array of tuples. For each object, uh, as long as it, with its classification confidence score, I guess this is for training, maybe, or testing. Um, each element contains information about the detective object, such as the class label and the confidence score. And then, uh, yep, uh, yep, new data file. This is kind of like the same thing. This is updating the model. So this is, this is actually the CRUD, right? We have the delete model, the update model, detect objects function which is the actual thing that's going to be reading and then the create uh, thing. So that's, that's pretty crazy that it just did all that. So now finally we want to do the UI kit. So let's say that we say uh, this and we're going to go down to the bottom here and then we're going to say uh, uh, UI kit, UI kit. Um, and then I want to say like use off-the-shelf components. Uh, and make it an easy to use camera style app. The controller money is loaded in division. <laughs> It's interesting because again, it's using all the stuff that we've written above too, right? And again, one of the nice parts about stubbing is that you don't need to worry about like using too many tokens, or at least you don't need to worry as much about using too many tokens. Uh, so we have the stop capturing video, which is going to stop capturing from the rear facing camera, the start capturing, which is going to start capturing from the rear facing camera, the setup of the furniture label, uh, set up the camera view, which sets it up with the appropriate constraints, I guess, to kind of like minimize the window. I'm not really sure. I, again, I don't really write Swift. Um, and then animate it. So yeah, I think that that looks pretty good. We we now have stubs for UI. We have stubs for the um, machine learning, the core ML, and we also have stubs for AR kit. And again, that took like 10 minutes or something like that, right? From not, not even having an idea, <laughs> right? We just had this quote about like furnitureness from a book that has nothing to do with programming. So. Anyway, I think that that's where I'm going to stop it um, for now.